Raina Morgan with iHealth2. We're visiting with Dr. Ellie Rappaport, the distinguished scientist, and he is talking to us about ATB, and you call it the universal energy source. And what we want to know today, Dr. Rappaport, is the intracellular versus extracellular ATP. Could you explain that to the viewers? Yes. As we saw uh, earlier, ATP is the major energy source inside every cell. Uh, ATP supplies the energy for the formation of chemical bonds. It supplies the energy for the mechanical function of muscles, skeletal muscles and cardiac muscles. And you call it the ancient molecule. Right. It's the, it's, it has been, an, it has been exi in existence since cells were formed, because once cells were formed, they needed to maintain originally the membrane potential. In other words, they needed to keep mm -hmm. sodium out and potassium okay. in, for instance. However, the big excitement in uh, the ATP research came in about the, the early 1980s, where it was discovered that ATP has a major role outside the cell, extracellularly. It was a huge discovery. It was not done by myself, <clears throat> but that actually is the science that stimulates or pushes supplements like PKTP. In other words, the great interest in supplements like PKTP has to do with the basic science that's done worldwide that pushes the interest in this particular compound. Now, there are, till now, there are 15 different receptors that have been identified for ATP and four for adenosine. Now, out of the 15 receptors, eight are belong to one kind and seven to the other kind, and they are called either P2X or P2Y, P2X1, P2X2, and so okay. forth, P21. And the adenosine receptors are A1, A2 alpha, A2 beta, A2, A3. Now, the significance of this extracellular ATP is that it enables us to supplement the extracellular compartment of the blood. For instance, uh, in the blood there are about 2.7 grams of ATP, and that is something that we cannot, this is intracellularly in red blood cells, okay. and this yeah. is, we could never replace that. However, the level of extracellular ATP is about two gram, two milligrams, I'm sorry, one thousandth to one ten thousandth less than the extra, the, the intracellular level. <clears throat> and that we can do. That we now, can do. <clears throat> now the problem, <clears throat> the, as you can imagine, the um, extracellular receptors are essentially proteins. If you can imagine this is a protein, that sits, that's embedded in a plasma membrane of a cell, and then the ATP interacts with the, with the receptor and brings about changes inside the cell. Now... Um, and those changes lead to... Those changes lead to several functions that are being okay. carried on. Now... Like muscle function? Uh, muscle function, blood flow, glycemic control, and so forth. Okay. Yes. Now, uh, the amount of ATP extracellularly is very, very small. And that we can achieve by uh, a nutritional supplement, peak ATP. It's, it's less than two milligram. And our... Um, our um, supplement is in the uh, range of 100 to 200 milligrams. Now, we can increase the intracellular, inside the cell ATP, by, by a roundabout way, by taking advantage of the activities of extracellular ATP. Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Rappaport. We'll visit again on this very interesting and exciting subject.